If you want to create realistic renders of objects in Blender, you'll need to add dust and hair to them. And a couple of months ago, I made a video on how to add dust and hair using a particle system. And a bunch of people commented on this video asking me why I wasn't using geometry nodes, because that's the way to do scattering in Blender now. So after doing some research and practice, I found that using geometry nodes is actually the best way to scatter dust and hair on your object. So let's go. So on Blender, you're going to want to have your object ready to render. So here I've got my Darth Vader helmet off Sketchfab. And uh, I've also got some dust and hair particles. Watch the last video if you want a like full in-depth tutorial of how to make this. But basically, it's just a couple of icospheres stretched and then some Bezier curves converted to mesh. The texturing for these bits of dust is quite simple. You can just ignore that bit right there. But it's basically just a diffused BSDF and a transparent BSDF mixed together with a high mix factor so there's more of the transparent BSDF being used. Anyways, with our object selected, just open up a new geometry nodes window here and just click on new to add a new geometry nodes modifier to it. We have our group input and output nodes. This is just our helmet like as an input and then this is our output and between these two, we're going to add in our dust and hair. So first we're going to add in a distribute points on faces node and just chuck that in there. So now that we've got this distribute points on faces, you can see it's kind of just chucking like these weird looking things on our helmet. We're going to fix that in a second. First, we just want to change that to poison disc. I don't know how you say it, but yeah, just do that. And then we're going to want to add in a instance on points node. So we have these points, right? But they're not actually like geometry and they're not the dust that we want them to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to instance something on those points, which is going to be our dust. So to get that, because now there's nothing, because there's nothing being instanced, we're going to add in our collection info node, which is going to get the information of our dust collection from up here. So to do that, we can just click in here, click dust, and then plug this instances into the instance here. And now we're getting this really weird thing where our helmet was here, but now our dust is all the way up here. So to fix that, we're just going to change this to relative. Then we're going to press separate and reset children. And now they should be where our Darth Vader helmet was. But then we want to do is we want to press pick instance because right now it's just choosing all the instances on each point. So we press pick instance and now there's going to be a random one for each point. And then let's just chuck this density max up to like, I don't know, 500. And see, now we're getting a lot of dust. <laughs> it's even in like the shape of his helmet. Uh, but now what we want to do is we want to add back in the helmet, of course. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in a join geometry node which is very much like a mixed color node from like, you know, the shader editor. Grab this geometry that's our Darth Vader's helmet, plug that back in on the top. And now we've got our helmet with our dust. So that's looking pretty nice. But we've got a bit of a problem here. They're all rotated the same way and scaled the same way. So to fix that, luckily we have these rotation and scale inputs. And we also have a random value node, which we're just going to add in and change it from float to vector which is the right kind of like socket that can connect to these inputs. So our random value node here is giving us a random value for each instance by X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. So basically what we're going to do, we're just going to hold shift, select those three and put in 360. And now this will be giving us a random value between zero and 360 for the rotation on each axis for each of the instances. So if we plug that value into the rotation here and you see they're all going to be randomly rotated now and not all facing the same direction. So then what we want to do is we just want to duplicate this but before we plug it into the scale, we want to bring this back down to one because otherwise there'd be some huge ones because it would be between zero and 360. So now we plug this into the scale and now you're going to see we get some really small ones and some normal sized ones. So we actually what we want to do here is maybe bring down this one a little bit, but also bring up this zero because if there's three zeros, that means some instances might just be nothing at all. So we can just bring that up like that. And of course, you can just play around these values until you get something you like. So now we've got our basic setup, which is pretty cool. This is kind of just like a particle system. But of course, we want to add our hair on top. So we can do that real quick just by copying across these nodes, adding in another join geometry, connecting these instances back on top and changing this to hair and changing this seed. And then you might notice Where's the hair gone? But I think we just need to bring up the scale. So the hair still isn't appearing and I've just realized why. This input from our geometry isn't connected to our mesh here. So this distribute points on faces node is doing nothing because it doesn't have anything to distribute on. So once we connect that up and then we scale this bad boy up. Yeah, nice. Now we're getting a really hairy Darth Vader. Okay, that's of course uh, way too much. So I'll bring that back down. 
and boom, we've basically got what we had in the last video. And now I'm gonna show you guys why using geometry nodes is better. So the reason why geometry nodes is better is because we have more control. There's so many nodes in the geometry node editor that you can use to control where this dust goes. And the one we're gonna use in this video is the ambient occlusion map, which we're gonna bake onto an image texture and then use that in our geometry nodes. So to bake the AO map, we're just gonna go shading here. We're just gonna add in a new image texture and then just press new and call this AO map bake, whatever, just something that you'll remember. The one thing you gotta make sure you do is change this width and height to 4096 by 4096. So it's 4K and I don't know, you have higher quality texture. Then with this image texture selected and your object selected as well, you're gonna to wanna to go to your render properties, make sure you're in cycles, GPU, and then go down to bake right here. And then make sure this bake type is ambient occlusion and then just press bake. Now you should see this down the bottom and it's just gonna bake your ambient occlusion onto this texture right here. So once your AO map is done, I've just renamed it here so I can remember which one it was because I've already got a couple. Um, you can just control shift left click on it, making sure you have the node wrangler add on enabled, which if you don't like, come on bro, just enable it. You can see here, we've got black parts kind of where the model is close to itself. And to enunciate that, we can add in our color ramp here and bring this black up and you can see it's in the cracks of the model here. So with this AO map in hand, we'll go back to our geometry node editor. And then what we can do is we're gonna add it in as our image texture here. So we can just select it. So what we wanna add in is a named attribute node. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna read an attribute from uh, the rest of our scene. What we wanna change this to is vector because it's a UV map. And then uh, we wanna change the name of our UV map so we can make sure we're selecting the right thing. So I'll just call this Darth Vader's map, and then just pick it from our list here. Look, Darth Vader's map, 2D vector. Plug this attribute into the vector here, and now this should be mapped onto our object properly. Now we can plug this color into whatever we want. And so what we're gonna plug it into is a color ramp, so we have control. I'll explain why in a second. And then we're gonna plug that into the density factor of our two distribute points on faces. So. To explain this, basically what this is, is it's a black and white map. And then we're putting this through a color ramp so we can control these black and white values and the contrast between the two. And then this density factor is basically just a number between zero and one. And if it's one, it means that the density is going to be equal to whatever this density is here, right? Because 1,500 times one is 1,500. But if the density factor is equal to zero, then it's 1,500 times zero, which is zero. So then there's no dust. So if we control the density factor, we can control where the dust is. And because it has the right socket for our color, it's perfect. So then what we're gonna do is plug this into the density factor of our dust and hair. Now you'll see it's doing the opposite of what we want there is no dust and hair in the cracks of our model. And that's because our AO map has baked the black to where the, the cracks of our model are and black equals zero. So what we're saying is that the density factor should be zero in the, dust, the cracks of our model. So what we actually wanna do is flip the color ramp. So in the cracks of our model, it should be one and in the flat open spaces, it should be zero. And now you'll see we're getting the result we want. And because it's a color ramp, we have so much control. And that's why this method is so much better. Because what we can do is we can just grab this white value and maybe take it to five so that the density is being multiplied by five in the cracks. But maybe that's too much. We can put that back down to one and we could bring up the contrast. So it's very clearly only in the cracks of our model. But it's still like really like bland in these open spaces. So we can take this black from being zero just to a little bit more. So instead of being zero, it's like 0.095. And now we're getting a really cool result where the dust is in the cracks of our model. And of course, if you change anything about your model, you will have to rebake the AO map, but that's not too much of a hassle when you get such cool results like this. So yeah, that's basically the method. It's kind of like the particle system where you're just instancing stuff, getting random values, but the power is in the fact that you can do this and you could use any texture you want. There's even noise textures in here. You could use a map range node instead of a color ramp if that's easier for you to understand. Uh, you can go in here, the seed, and just change that around randomly. I mean, it's just like the possibilities are endless in geometry nodes and it is the way that Blender is looking forward to the future. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe and hopefully you can make some really cool renders with this. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.
Keep going with Blender. You got this.